Have you heard of the Strokes? You would love the Strokes. What's up, everybody? Jason here, back with Kramzer, Joe, and our good friend Brian from his own YouTube channel, Brian Bringelson. And uh, yeah, he's uh, very knowledgeable about, especially in my estimation from watching him, like 60s rock, pop, early 70s singer-songwriter stuff. That seems to be your zone. If uh, you haven't seen the first two episodes of this series, basically what happens here, this is essentially competitive music recommending. We are taking five records that kind of sum up our taste, not necessarily our five favorite records, but five records that kind of hit on the different areas of things we like and sharing them with our guest. And they're doing the same for us. We take that list and whatever maybe else we've gathered from watching each other's YouTube channels and coming up with a recommendation for them and them us. We will take their picks and rank them among our other guests. And their job is to decide which of the, our three recommendations they like the most. And we get a point for each one that they like the most. So episode one, Joe got the win with Shannon. Episode two, I took the win with our good friend, Dylan. Cram is still looking for his first win. We'll see, it's one-to-one. -one. Um, I guess I'll let uh, Joe start this one talking about his five records. Alrighty, my five records that I guess describe me as a musical person. Whatever and Ever Amen by Ben Folds Five, which sort of, you know, he's a wise ass. He plays piano really well, great band. Elvis Costello, Joe Jackson, that type of thing. Purple Rain, because Prince is God which, yes, he's just got physical graffiti for Led Zeppelin, 70s hard rock. You know, it doesn't get much better than that. A lot of different variation in the style on that one record. I like a lot of different styles. Also, Angel Dust by uh, Faith No More. I love Mike Patton. I love his voice. I love his weirdness. He's just such a weird dude. And this is such a weird mix of metal and alternative. And just, it's a ridiculous album. Also, finally, I got Talking Book by Stevie Wonder because he's just one of the great pop R&B songwriters of all time. And this is during the 70s when he was, you know, the man, the dude, uh, just an incredible run of albums. And this is my favorite of his run. So I thought that was a good one to describe myself. Representing my musical taste, we got Love is Hell by Ryan Adams, singer-songwriter, dark, moody, kind of depressing, lovesick. Honky Chateau by Elton John. Gotta love the 70s production. Amazing vocal performance. Um, and I love kind of his sassiness on this album. The Benz, Radiohead, My Religion. Purple Rain by Prince. Yeah, he's a god in the 80s. So I got to put him in there. And then I've got Tommy by The Who. Shows something a little bit more, um, a little bit more pragmatic and a huge kind of vision for a piece of musical taste. Just to show that I don't just stick to the pop and the pop rock stuff so there we go all right my five i've got the white album by the beatles the beatles are my favorite band of all time i like all of their stuff but i think if i have to pick one especially to kind of cover all my bases i mean they do so much different stuff on the white album uh so i'm going with that ziggy stardust and the spiders from mars by david bowie um, as far as like rock and roll goes this is it's kind of like my ideal, a little campy, a little over the top, kind of theatrical. I like glam a lot, so going with that. I've got Something Anything by Todd Rundgren, another record that covers a lot of bases, the kind of 70s pop songwriting that I really like, really well crafted. Also going with Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco, because I think that sort of covers my Americana bases, but also shows that I don't mind a bit of experimentation as well. And going with Where You Been by Dinosaur Jr. Because even though I don't talk about a lot of heavy music on the channel, I do like heavy guitars from time to time. So those are my five. Brian, how about you? What were the five that you gave to us? Yeah, so my five start with the Beatles Revolver. It's just, um, I love the Beatles. Obviously they're my number one band. Having to choose just one album 
it's pretty much impossible, but I went with Revolver just because it's the first Beatles album I ever heard, first one I owned, and I just, I love everything about it. Next album is uh, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, and I know this is like such a cliche, everyone says this is their favorite album, but I, I really do love it so much, and uh, I like so much by the Beach Boys that if I had to just narrow it down, uh, it would be Pet Sounds. And then uh, Blonde on Blonde by Bob Dylan. Uh, I think it's just uh, one of the best double albums ever released. And uh, Dylan has so many great albums, but Blonde on Blonde is never beat for me as far as uh, just overall sound and songwriting and everything like that. And then I wanted to, I really like jazz a lot. And I wanted to kind of pick like just my, the album I can put on any time to listen to. And I chose uh, the Dave Rubick Quartet's album, Time Out. Uh, it's just like I said, one of those records I could put on any time and I always, always enjoy it. And then my last pick was Stevie Wonder's uh, Songs in the Key of Life. It's just an album that changed my life completely when I heard it for the first time. Uh, and even to this day, I, it's just, it always, always puts me in a good mood and always inspires me. So those are my, uh, my top five. All right. So my record for Brian really, and he, zeroes in on one of these records. Uh, I'm going with a record called Freedom Wind by the Explorers Club. This mm. band really likes the Beach Boys, I will just say that. And uh, yeah, I think knowing that you like not just the Beach Boys, but a, a wide array of kind of like 60s pop and that kind of vocal harmony stuff, I think you will really enjoy it. And even if it doesn't become your favorite record of all time. I think it's just probably going to be interesting for you to hear it. Okay, cool. I, of the five guests we have on this game show, you were the toughest to come up with. One, okay. because I threw out a couple that I believe uh, you rejected, but now we've, because <laughs> you've heard so much. I went with Gemstones by Adam Green. This is my wild card Hal Mary for all of the five because he's he's almost like a love it or leave it kind of guy. He's very at times crude, very quirky at times, um, very juvenile, but his songwriting has that 60s sort of approach. I don't think he has like any songs in his catalog over three. They're quick little just get in, get out, little pop things. Nothing too pretty, and he's very much a singer-songwriter, and this album in particular has a lot of kind of like 60s little symphonic notes and Wurlitzer piano, so I, I'm nervous about this one. I'm not predicting a win on this episode, but yeah, that's what I came up with, Gemstones by Adam Green. Interesting. Okay, cool. All right, for mine, and I could have given this artist to everyone because... I love him a lot, so this is a personal one for me. So if you don't like this, uh, then I'm gonna be very upset with you personally. I picked How to Die in the North by BC Camp Light. Uh, 2015, one of my favorite albums of the decade. It's weird, it's got, he's got this Brian Wilson kind of strangeness to him, little Harry Nelson pop sensibilities channels 60s 70s songwriting i think really well he's got a fantastic voice you can get those kind of just perfect beautiful brian wilson choruses but he's a little avant-garde as well he pulls back from like just the the pure bubble gum of it and he's just a really interesting guy and i'm always trying to push him on people and so i'm pushing him on you <laughs> i hope you enjoy bc camp light how to die in the north Right on. Wow. Those are all three of those are, I've never heard of any of those. So I'm excited to check them out and uh, see how I like them. Uh, it's, it's nice to like get new music that you don't have even a clue as to who the, who the artists are. So I'm excited to check them out. Cool. So what, uh, what do you have for us? For you guys. Okay. Um, I'll go with Joe first for Joe. This is a band called tennis. And it's their second album uh, called Young and Old. And I, it's just really melodic, uh, has a little bit of like a kind of a surf guitar vibe to it. And I, I just really feel like based on your recommendations, I think this is really gonna kind of hit a, 
sweet spot for you. And then for Cram, I chose um, an album by Mike Nesmith and the first national band. Mike Nesmith, of course, was in The Monkees, but he has a pretty weird solo career. Uh, and so I chose his album uh, called Magnetic South for you. And I think just, well, because we're basing this off of the of your top five, I just really think it's going to hit all the right spots for you, but um, also be something completely new that might maybe, I don't know, change your perception about Mike Nesbitt and maybe even Monkeys. And then for Jason, I chose a, an album by kind of an obscure 60s band called Rainbow Folly. And it's an album called Sally's Fourth. And just because you, you seem to be into that, um, much like me, like that 60s kind of psychedelic, but also um, maybe heading in the glam rock direction as well. So that really kind of got me uh, thinking about that album for you. So those are my picks for you guys. So hopefully, hopefully you like them. Your pick is an interesting one for me because I do know tennis and I knew their more recent albums, but I had never gone to this one or their first. So that'll be interesting to hear the cool. difference because the ones I've heard don't sound like what you described. So that's kind of piquing my interest on, on how they started out. Right on. Yeah. All right. So uh, we are going to go. We're going to check these records out. We will reconvene and we will give you the results of our listening. We will be right back. We are back. We've given these records a listen and now it's time to find out what we think of them. So who would like to go first? Cram? Sure. So the recommendation I got was a solo effort from former Monkees member Michael Nesmith. And this one is called Magnetic South. Know the Monkees, didn't honestly, I've never listened to a Monkees album. I know the hits, which I like, don't love. I know Davy Jones and no other names of the members. So this was just a complete shock. And it was very interesting because it doesn't sound much like the Monkees at all. So my first impression of this was, this came out in 1970 and it had some really good guitar noodling right off the bat kind of mixed in with a nice like Western country sound on the song Calico Girlfriend, blended in like noodling kind of with pedal steel. But even for 1970, I thought it sounded a bit dated. Overall for me, I was not crazy about this album. I'm in between two and a half and three, but I'm gonna lean towards two and a half just because I kind of label threes and above stuff I definitely would go back to. I appreciate this album a lot, but it was not geared towards me because of just like the Western kind of sound. I just don't relate to that as much. Appreciated the hell out of this. Um, it sounded like a lot of like the slower songs were just kind of like those big 60s Texas banquet kind of slow dance songs, which it's just, there are some songs on here I really like. Joanne is fantastic. I also love the lead off track. Two, three, and four, Nine Times Blue, Little Red Rider, The Crippled Line, don't do a whole lot for me. I liked Hollywood a lot, too, towards the end. Now, if the whole album sounded like that, it would be, like, much higher, because it has, like, some of that 60s influence, change of pace, psychedelia kind of mixed in with that Western sound. Joanne was really nice, because I wasn't crazy about a lot of the vocals until Joanne, when he just starts doing the falsetto, Thought it was a little flat vocally throughout a lot of the album. So I appreciated this a good bit, but it was not really designed for me as a fast paced city boy, unfortunately. <laughs> so two and a half, which means I think it's decent. I definitely didn't dislike it. Loved some of the guitar work on it. And I thought Hollywood and Joanne were really good. That's where I'm at. So he sent me uh, Adam Green uh, gemstones. And this record blew me away. First of all, it's really, really quirky and hits all the right spots for me as far as quirkiness goes. Cause I'm, I'm a big fan of like Lindsey Buckingham, Harry Nielsen, some of the more eccentric uh, kind of rock people. And the other thing I didn't know about Adam Green, I look, uh, when I listen to music, I always look up like the Wikipedia page or whatever. I try to get a little bit more background on, on the artists. Didn't know he was part of the Moldy Peaches. Thought that was really cool. 
I just, from the very beginning, I liked it just because it was so different and it was so in your face and obscure um, and just lyrically really, really fun. Um, so I really liked it. I liked it a lot. I would probably give it probably like three and a half stars out of, out of five. The one thing I think that was going against it for me, and I don't, I don't even know if this is what he was really trying to accomplish or anything like that, but I, none of the songs were really that memorable. Like I didn't really, none of them stuck out to me as like, that was my favorite song. I just kind of liked it all the same. And it was just a really good listen. So definitely a good recommendation and uh, an artist that I kind of want to explore a bit more in the future for sure. Whew. I thought I really uh, nuked myself to death there with that pick because yeah, he can be really quirky, but knowing like your 60s tendencies, especially like Harry Nilsson, we've been mentioning, I was like, yeah, yeah it's got kind of like the lime and the coconut feel at times. Um, I do think this is his best album. Feel free to check out other stuff, but if you ever get a chance to see him live, fantastic. He literally came down off of the stage and French kissed my friend Seth just out of nowhere. <laughs> we don't really know why, but he just did it and he's bizarre and Right on. That's cool. I guess I will go next uh, and talk about Rainbow Folly, the record Sally's Fourth. Is that right? Or do I have the artist and album backwards? Uh, that's right. Yeah. And it's, okay. they are a bit confusing with the, I, yeah. I, I was the same way for a long time. I was like, is the band called Sally's Fourth? But yeah, it's Rainbow Folly album, Sally's Fourth. Yeah. And that is, uh, to be clear to anyone trying to search this or look it up, it's Folly and Fourth are both spelled with two Fs at the beginning, which is interesting. Um, yeah. It's really got that kind of like Sergeant Pepper, Her Satanic Majesty's Request, just like that very psychedelic pop type of thing going on. Uh, really cool, good harmonies, a lot of 12 string guitar. I think maybe I feel a little bit the way that you felt about the Adam Green record, where nothing really jumped out as like, man, this song is amazing. But it, I think, so I'll just come out and say it. I have this at three and a half stars. And the first two episodes, I had those recommendations at four stars. So this comes in under those, but in a way, this one was like a more interesting discovery for me. Just, I, I love these kind of like slightly obscure, like 60s kind of curiosities. So really, really cool to hear. I enjoyed it a lot. Very, very cool record. Of, interesting relic of the time and if you're into that sort of thing this is a, another cool one to check out for sure so I think I think a lot of people might enjoy this one um okay so yeah I'm glad I'm glad that you liked it I it was definitely like a it was hard to choose for all of you guys I will say that so I was I tried to get like the most obscure albums I possibly could so I think uh anyway I'm glad I'm glad that you liked it and you appreciate what it was so for your pick, for me, uh, I believe you recommended the Explorers Club, Freedom Wind. So this album absolutely floored me. And I hardly ever get a recommendation that just, just absolutely exceeds all my expectations. And when you said that it had like a Beach Boys feel to it, so many people throw that around and say, oh, it sounds like the Beach Boys or whatever. But this 100% has a Beach Boys vibe about it. And I loved it from the very beginning of the first song that has like a little bit like studio kind of chatter and then goes into like a Be My Baby type production. And it's just so Brian Wilson, obviously their influences are Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys and it just hit all the spots for me. And I really, really, really liked it. In fact, I listened to it, I think like three times in a row I was only gonna to listen to it once, but I liked it so much that it just, it really, really caught my ear. And I would give this uh, four and a half stars out of five. It's just, I don't, like I said, I very rarely get something recommended to me that I just really, really like a whole lot. And on a side note, um, they, they kind of remind me a little bit of a band called Splitsville, who recorded an album called, uh, I think they're called Pet Soul, which is like a combination of like rubber soul and pet sounds mixed together. I don't know if you guys have heard that or not, um, but very much that similar type of uh, Beach Boy thing. And the only reason, by the way, I didn't give this Explorers Club album five stars is that there were times where 
I thought like they were going too far. Like it was two Beach Boys. It was almost like I was like listening to like a, a parody band in a, in a weird way. But that's just mild criticism when you're, you're trying to sound like the Beach Boys. So yeah, really, really great, a great, uh, great choice. Cool. Um, that was the risk I felt like he's either going to like really love it or it's going to be just too much like the Beach Boys that he's going to downgrade it for that. Because, I mean, I, I could see some people saying like, this is just a rip off of the Beach Boys. Like this isn't original at all, but I do think the songwriting is good on it. Yeah, it wasn't like Greta Van Fleet or something like that where, where I wasn't like angered at, at that. I, I like really like appreciate it a lot. Joe, I'm rooting for you to get a five star in here. I don't want Jason's braggadocio for the next week. Please take the win here. Well, you know, I, I kind of, I'm a little upset about that Explorers Club review because I'm one of those people who think it's just too much. I, I liked a couple of their songs, um, but I always thought it was just trying a little too hard and not original enough. Uh, it's a out? decent album, a decent album. I'd give it three and a half stars, maybe. What year did it come out? It came out in 2008. I didn't know they were around that long. Wow. All right, Brian, for me, you picked Young and Old by Tennis, a band I am familiar with. I gave yours conditionally four stars in 2017, but uh, 2020's release, Swimmer, didn't quite do it for me. Three stars. It was my 127th uh, ranked record that year. Three stars, but I, I felt it was a kind of a, a weak follow up. This one I hadn't heard. This is their second album, 2013. And I don't even know if I would have known they're the same band anymore because this one is so much breezier. You definitely have that retro you know, 60s, maybe not retro, vintage, I like to say, vintage flavor. It was produced by uh, Patrick Carney of the Black Keys, which I found interesting. And you can kind of hear like that drum sound a little bit, but it never feels like, you know, a Black Keys record or anything like that. It's, it's up-tempo, it's, it's poppy, a lot of nice piano. And she has, sometimes she has like a little Debbie Harry in her voice, which is cool. Dreaming has like this country feel, like 60s girl group almost, which I really liked. Whole album, like you said, I think when you're introducing it, it's like a little beachy, uh, chill, oceanfront, like a nice vacation kind of, it's laid back. But the hooks are really strong. Um, I think the production's really good on it. And I think they, in their later albums, they get real serious and sort of like overly into like the indie scene. And this feels like they're just sort of like relaxed and just letting it flow. My favorite tennis album, it's, it's a four stars. It's ahead of yours conditionally. Um, so definitely dug it. And I listened to it uh, three times. The first time I was like, okay, this is pretty good. Second time I was like, okay, this is pretty darn good. And then the third time, because it, it kept growing on me and I wanted to hear more. So yeah, a strong four star album for for tennis young and old i forgot they had an album out last year i need to listen to it, but i like all the tennis stuff every single one of them is three stars for me jason actually got me into them when we used to just play radio back and forth like in like 2013 or whatever when i was living in pittsburgh you put them on and yeah cool yeah um i'm glad that you liked it uh it's it's definitely an album i'm glad you listened to it more than once because i was the same way for me where it uh, I actually heard it in a record store. That's how I first heard of them. It was right when that album came out. They were playing that record in the record store. And I hardly ever hear something in a record store that I either, you know, like, let alone don't know or something like that. And uh, I bought it off of the uh, turntable they had that it was playing. I literally bought that copy. And just, it was one of those ones, like you were saying, where it, it really got me interested in them and then on the second and third listen I really appreciated it a lot more so I'm glad that you liked it as well so your your choice for me I, I gotta say like I said earlier all three of you guys all of your choices were I was telling my wife about this actually they all blew me away because I liked all of them and I went into this thinking that maybe maybe I would kind of like one album I thought I'd have to kind of like fake it and pretend like I really liked that one album just so I'd you know wouldn't look like a complete, I don't know, 
stick in the mud or something like that. But this choice, uh, BC Camp Light, How to Die in the North, it also really was a beautiful, beautiful record. And it you were so right in the sense of, it has that Brian Wilson influence for sure. Um, but it has something a little bit different in there as well. And I actually did a little bit of, um, I read about the little back history of the of the main guy here. And I guess he, you know, he kind of gave up on music for a while uh, and then moved to the UK and decided to get back into music. And this is the album that he, he created. So that was really a cool kind of uh, aspect to it. So um, there was, from start to finish, it was really, really great. Um, and I think it was a really hard decision for me to like, to give it a rating because I will say all three of these albums are so their own thing. And on, on like another day, I might like one more than the other because like with the Adam Green album, I like a little bit of quirkiness and with the Explorers Club, you know, I, maybe I want to go back into like, if I don't want, if I heard too much Beach Boys, I want something like the Beach Boys, but a little different. And with this album, um, it's just now that I think that I, I want to get for myself and, and listen to it a lot more. But I ended up giving it four out of five stars, um, which is for me is great because I, I love it. But the Explorers Club had that half of a star more just because it had that first initial impact on me as it just blew me away right away. That's not to say that in like a month's time, it might, my list might change. But as far as my first initial um, listen, by the way, I listened to all these albums. I think Adam Green, I, I listened to uh, twice. And then I think Explorers Club I listened to like maybe three or four times. And the BC Camp Light I listened to uh, uh, three times. So yeah, that's my rating for for, for that one, I gave it four out of five. And, uh, but like I said, well done all of you guys. You guys really, these were all albums that I'm actually gonna try to find uh, copies of if I can, physical copies and uh, add them to my collection because I really, really liked them. Well, that's a win for all three of us. Jason, you shouldn't feel too good about this. I, I feel pretty good about it. Um, but yeah, that's not the point. The point is just to like, for us to find music that, you know, we wouldn't otherwise for you to find music and for people watching to maybe that haven't heard these records to find them as well so yeah that's really what it's all about even though i am now in the lead so <laughs> we got a few more there's yeah, there's time there's time for you to catch up so i already gave away my ranking for how your stacks up it comes in third out of three but that doesn't mean i didn't appreciate it i i really thought it was cool and interesting to hear Right on. Yeah, I appreciated a lot of stuff about it, um, but Shannon still has my top recommended album with uh, Vic Chestnut at the cut. Vic Chestnut is, yeah, that's great. So I'm, I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> Your, for me, yours is so close. Uh, Dylan recommended Post Animal when I think of you in a castle. Which I really liked, four stars. This one, Young and Old by Tennis, four stars. Both beat out Shannon's handily. She did Bang, World Party, three and a half, low three and a half. These two, of, I don't know if I can really choose because beginning of today, I would have said, when I think of you in a castle, the winner. But I listened to Tennis earlier today and it, it keeps like rising. So it's like, it, it, I swear, if I listen to it one more time, I think it will jump ahead. So I'm going to say tennis is my favorite in anticipation of uh, the next lesson. Every guest yeah. has uh, one of us in the lead, right? Um, no. We, we, me oh, and you both have Sorry, to. Dylan. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, Dylan's not going to be happy about that pre-anticipated <laughs> uh, bump that you gave over his record, but oh well. Um, but yeah. Thanks a lot for coming on. Enjoyed having you. It was a blast. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, I had a great time. And uh, it was nice meeting you all via video. And uh, I look forward to more of your videos. So yeah, thank thanks you so much. So everyone watching, if you want to drop down in the comments more recommendations for Brian based on what you know about him now from watching this video, drop them down there. He can 
peruse the comments, check them out. Uh, you can drop recommendations for us as well. We will do our best, even though we're listening to a full discography every week. It's kind of tough to squeeze other things in, but uh, we will do our best. And, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, check the description for uh, links to all of our social media accounts. We'll leave a link down there to Brian's channel as well. And yeah, we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.